Hey guys, happy new year to all of you watching this one upon release here. Just got done playing a bunch of dates on Chris Bodie's iconic Blue Note holiday residency. It was really fun playing on that. And I'm about to go back on the road with Chris this week. We're going to be doing a couple weeks of touring on the West Coast. Feel free to check out my website for touring dates. It was so great to get back on the road in 2021. Certainly a highlight of my year. Got to play a bunch of sold out trio shows, which is thanks to all of you for coming through. And it's so great to be back on the road with Chris. If you haven't seen him live yet, it's an incredible show. So make sure to check it out if you haven't already. And last thing before we get started here, I know a lot of you have been asking about the equipment that I've been playing on. This is all Nexus equipment at this point. I'm really excited to be releasing this line of equipment with Jack Finucane of the Boston Sax Shop. It's all under the Nexus brand. We've got mouthpieces, ligatures, reeds, saxophones, and necks that are all going to be coming out. This was all designed collaboratively with myself and Jack. We're just really excited to now have this all ready to go so we can get it out to you guys and see what you guys think. This equipment has been feeling really good to me, so I'm just excited to have it out there so you guys can enjoy it as well. So today we're gonna to talk about how to use pentatonics on jazz standards. And we're gonna check out a bunch of content from a PDF package download that I just released with jazz lesson videos, which is called 30 Pentatonic Etudes on Jazz Standards. And what we did with this ebook is I took 15 standard song forms and I wrote two etudes on each song. One etude just uses inside pentatonic language all the way through, just a lot of stuff all the way through. And the other etude on each standard uses pentatonic shifting. So essentially it uses different techniques for going inside and outside of the harmony to create tension and release. This is a really cool modern concept for getting intense sounds when you're trying to go in and outside of the chord changes. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to understand is what pentatonic scales sound inside or harmonious on what chords. So in other words, what's gonna be your inside tonal option on a major seven chord, a dominant seven chord, and a minor seven chord to start. So the first thing that we wanna know is what is a major pentatonic scale? So the easiest way to think about the major pentatonic scale is just thinking about a major scale itself and just taking the first, second, third, fifth, and sixth degrees of that scale. That's gonna leave you with a five note scale, which is the definition of a pentatonic scale. So the first thing to consider is that on a major seven chord, your traditional option is just going to be playing a major pentatonic scale from that common root. However, you might find that that sounds a little bit hokey. It's not bad and I use it myself all the time, but you might not wanna use it as your only option. So a C major pentatonic scale over a C major seven chord is gonna sound like this. And so again, that sounds fine, but another option that you can do for a slightly more colorful effect is the major pentatonic scale starting on the fifth of the chord. So in C major, that's gonna be a G major pentatonic scale on that C major chord. That would sound like this. Now you could also think about that if you want as an E minor pentatonic scale on a C major seven chord. That's because the major pentatonic scale and the minor pentatonic scale are essentially the same scale just starting from different places. But it's important to learn these scales from their roots because they have totally different sounds depending on where the root is. Now with that in mind, let's talk about your options on a minor seven chord. So you're gonna have a few different options, but my two favorite options are just going to be using one, a minor pentatonic scale from that root so if you're on C minor, use a C minor pentatonic scale. Now with a minor pentatonic scale, you could learn it as a mode of the major pentatonic scale, but I highly advise against that. It's best to learn it as its own scale and its own harmonic device. So if we do that, I recommend learning it in reference to the minor Dorian scale. That's gonna be the most commonly used minor scale in jazz. And so to build the minor pentatonic from the Dorian scale, all we're gonna do is take the first, third, fourth, fifth and seventh notes of that scale. That will sound like this. And if we do that over a minor chord from the same root, it will sound like this. Now the other option that I really like for sounding inside on a minor seven chord is going to be using the four dominant pentatonic scale. So that means if we're in C minor, we're gonna use a dominant pentatonic scale from F. That will sound like this. 
So now let's talk about what the dominant pentatonic scale is. With that dominant pentatonic scale, you can use it like we just discussed, or of course you can use it just on a dominant seven chord from a common root. So that means, for instance, using that same scale that we just played from F, but using it on an F7 chord. Now to construct a dominant pentatonic scale, what I recommend is looking in reference to the Mixolydian dominant scale, which is our most common dominant scale in jazz, and taking the first, second, third, fifth, and seventh notes of that scale. That dominant pentatonic scale from a dominant seven chord with the same root will sound like this. So now let's hear what all these scales sound like just improvising a little bit over each chord. Here's the C major pentatonic scale on a C major seven chord. Here's a G major pentatonic scale on a C major seven chord. Here's a C minor pentatonic scale on a C minor seven chord. Here's an F dominant pentatonic scale on a C minor chord. And finally, here's a C dominant pentatonic scale on a C7 chord. So now that we know what pentatonic scales you can use on the three most common chord qualities that come up in jazz, let's check out what it sounds like to use these sounds and real lines over a standard chord progression. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna check out content from that Etudes PDF download. And so you're welcome to download that off of the Jazz Lesson Videos website if you wanna see these full charts. And so one Etude from that book covers a lot of chord changes. We'll check that out now to see how to use these pentatonic scales in a melodic way over a standard. And that's an Etude on a tune that we call All the Things That Could Be. And I'm sure these chord changes are gonna look familiar to you. And what you'll see in these first eight bars here is we're only using notes from pentatonic scales that sound harmonious and inside on each chord. So we have a lot of changes here and it gives a nice opportunity to practice playing these different scales through a lot of harmony. So on the first four bars, you're just gonna see a G minor pentatonic scale, a C minor pentatonic scale, an F dominant pentatonic scale, and a B flat major pentatonic scale. So all just very inside here. But you'll notice what makes this stuff work and sound nice and melodic and inventive is using cool shapes with pentatonic scale and voice leading from measure to measure. So you'll see like from the first measure to the second measure, we voice lead, that's just a smooth transition into a chord tone, we voice lead into the seventh degree of the C minor seven chord. And into the F7 chord, we'll see we're voice leading into the third of that F7 chord. And into the B flat major seven, we voice lead into the fifth. On the E flat major chord, we see just an E flat major pentatonic scale. On the E minor, we just see the E minor pentatonic scale. We just have a couple notes on the A7 from the A dominant pentatonic scale. But then when we get to the D major seven chord, that's where we're gonna see the use of that other major pentatonic scale option, where we actually play A major pentatonic scale on a D major chord. And you'll see that ends up getting a lot more color to the sound than it would if we were just playing a D major pentatonic scale there. So let's hear what these first eight bars sound like. So that's a great example of how to put inside pentatonics into practice over a jazz standard. But as I mentioned earlier, you can also shift inside and outside of tonalities using pentatonics. So let's check out some content from a pentatonic shifting etude that I wrote on a song that we're calling Don Lee. So right off the bat here, we see some inside pentatonics on the very first measure. We've got this B flat major seven chord and we've got B flat major pentatonic. But then in that second bar, we're not playing G7. And so here's where we get into a very important consideration here, which is that when you're thinking about pentatonic shifting and getting in and out of different tonalities, what's more important than the actual harmonic substitution that you do is actually how you get there and how you get out of it. 
So really it's about the glue that sticks one sound to another. In other words, it's more about the shift than it is about where you go to. So what we find here on the G7 is that we shift to F sharp minor. We shift there by going up a half step from the last note of that B flat major seven into a B natural on the G7. So that's a very tight voice lead getting into that third of the G7, but instead of playing in G7 tonality, we go to another sound that also has the note B in it. So essentially, if you pick a note in the 12 note chromatic system, any note that you pick is going to be a part of five different pentatonic scales in that tonality. So right here, we're picking the note B and we're on G7, but instead of playing inside G dominant tonality, we're gonna go to minor tonality. And with that B natural, we're gonna have five different options of minor chords that we can play. Essentially, we're just using this B as a pivot note. From there, we could play B minor, G sharp minor, F sharp minor, E minor, and C sharp minor. Now, what we end up picking here is F sharp minor. And this transition sounds slick because we're using a shared note in that G7 sound. We landed on the third of G7, which is melodic, and then we pivoted out. Then halfway through, we use the F sharp on beat three of this second bar to pivot into a new sound. We use that to pivot into C sharp minor. That F sharp is a shared note between the F sharp minor and the C sharp minor that we're pivoting to. Then on beat two of the third bar, we just move down a half step to get us back inside of that C7 sound. And then we just use the C dominant pentatonic scale. Now it's important to know that when you're soloing and using this stuff, when I'm soloing and using pentatonic shifting, I'm not literally thinking in my head, oh, let me go to that tonality and then that tonality and then let me do that and that. The idea is to just get a hang of using these notes as anchor notes to just go to different places and then come back inside. Again, it's more about the glue that brings the line together than it is the actual substitution that you go to. Any substitution that you do is going to sound outside. It's just a matter of how outside it sounds depending on how tense the substitution you're using is. So again, with a lot of the etudes in this book, we're actually focusing more on the shifting than we are on the specific substitution. That being said, it can still be awesome to just do traditional subs using pentatonics. <laughs>So if we move down in this etude and we check out a part at the end, we'll see a D7 that goes into a G minor. That's a very straightforward five dominant to one minor type of sound. In this case, we're in B flat major, so we're technically doing a dominant into six minor. But what's more important to understand here is that we're just using a tritone substitution with the pentatonic scale that we pick. So we have a D7 chord, but we're using a G sharp minor pentatonic scale. You could also use a G sharp seven pentatonic scale. Either way sounds great. And notice the glue that holds this line together is that voice leading that brings it from measure to measure. We move down by just a half step to get from that F sharp at the end of the D7 bar to the F natural on the G minor bar, which brings us to the seven and brings us back inside to the G minor pentatonic sound. We also voice lead in that next bar to bring us to another substitution that we do, where we actually play an F sharp minor pentatonic scale on that D7 that brings us into the G minor sound in the next bar. And notice with each bar, we're just connecting by a half step to get from one sound to the other. All right guys, so I hope you've learned something about how to use pentatonics on standards here. The most important thing to do is just get started. The hardest step is always the first step. Once you jump into this, you might be surprised about how fast you can start having fun with it. And if you want a resource to start getting into the inside and outside pentatonic sounds, you're definitely welcome to download that PDF package at jazzlessonvideos.com. Again, that's called 30 Pentatonic Etudes on Standards. With that, you'll also have recordings of me playing each etude as well as backing tracks as a resource for you. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Again, I hope you learned something and looking forward to seeing you guys next time. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below just to let us know what you want us to cover next. Happy New Year and happy shedding.